Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 6, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Sort of interesting uh, phishing email today that Xavier is going over. This one does not use of the typical trick where they find a random website, compromise it, and then insert the phishing page. Instead, they're using an existing service here, surveygizmo.com, to launch their phishing attack. Surveygizmo, like other similar websites, allows you to set up online surveys and they just sort of create their phishing page as a survey, essentially. And with that, they hope to bypass some filters. On the other hand, the page doesn't really look all that plausible, I find. So not sure how many you users actually fall for this. And talking about phishing, uh, mentioned yesterday a coronavirus. I just received an email that was not a phish that came from healthcare.gov, but sort of had uh, all the hallmarks of a phishing email. So if you have users submitting emails as phishes that contain a link to lnks.gd, that apparently is the domain that the US government is now using sort of as a short link click through count. I'm not really sure why they need a short link for a link in an email, but either way makes the email look very suspicious. And comment any users submitting it to you as a possible fish uh, because it really should not be a link that anybody clicks on. Now the next uh, vulnerability I got for you is a bit more technical and it relates uh, to a real difficult problem. How do we actually ensure that a computer system hasn't sort of been altered with as it's uh, booting up? Well, Intel's solution to this problem has recently, sort of in recent years, been the Converged Security and Manageability Engine or CSME. Uh, this is essentially a little 486 computer built into the CPU with its own operating system and it is responsible for sort of providing access control to different components and it also contains secret keys that can be used to verify that the system has not been altered and that all the bias code and so that's running on the system is legitimate. Now the problem here is that like any computer, this little CSME mini computer also needs a RAM and there is a very tiny uh, gap in the system actually booting up and protections being set up to prevent access to the RAM from outside that CSME. And this little timing gap is what positive technologies uh, presumes can be exploited in order to change part of the keys being used by the system or retrieve some of the keys uh, being used, which then could be used to further uh, compromise the system. At this point, it doesn't look like Positive Technologies actually has exploited this. They just say they believe they can get to those keys. Those keys are not unique to the system. They're the same across all of Intel's systems. So if someone would get a hold of those keys, that would certainly be quite bad. And yes, it's a hardware problem. So there will not be a patch for it for existing systems. Positive Technologies says that they will publish a paper with more details in the future. Uh, don't worry about reading it. Uh, there's really nothing you can do about this flaw anyway. And earlier this week, I mentioned that Let's Encrypt planned to revoke 3 million certificates uh, because uh, they had some issues in validating the CAA record. Well, it uh, turns out that this plan didn't really get implemented quite as proposed. There were about half of those certificates, uh, 1.7 million, that had been replaced already by their owners, and those certificates had be have been revoked. The remaining 
remainder uh, 1.3 million well, was apparently still in use. So uh, Let's Encrypt will give those people additional time and uh, up to the 90 days uh, that Let's Encrypt certificates are usually valid for. Uh, this actually posed some interesting questions because the revocation was not sort of Let's Encrypt's idea. It's required by the browser forum that basically specifies these certificate authority standards. And well, in the past, uh, certificate authorities have been removed from browsers for violating some of these uh, policies. Now, there are some reasons here that are being stated by Let's Encrypt why they think it's okay. For example, they feel that there is a large disruption here. They also did check that none of those certificates are actually not allowing Let's Encrypt to issue certificates. So we'll see how this will all end up. If you are affected, still uh, please replace your certificate. And well, if you need any more podcasts to listen to, Jack started its own podcast. Trust me, I'm certified with Jason Nicola. The goal is to explore a little bit imposter syndrome and well, uh, the podcast, I believe, is supposed to be published uh, weekly. And the first guest in the first uh, episode here was uh, Leslie Carhart. So give it a try. It's currently available via Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.